All right, let's get a what's up to YouTube. Uh, we're gonna show you guys how to burst on Frost Mage. Uh, our request was from our boy Burrow right here. Um, so we're gonna just show you guys real quick how to burst and what that looks like and kind of what your downtime looks like as well. All right, let's get it. Cool, so um, first things first, uh, we're gonna go over talents. This is for PVE. Uh, this is typically what I run for twos. Um, if I'm running double DPS twos, the only thing here is just taking this cryo freeze. It's going to heal you and block. Uh, this is like what I run mainly for like solo shuffles. I push 2400 using this build. Um, and I believe, uh, what's his name? Uh, from Canada QC runs this build on all of his mages and he's got like four uh, mages on ladder that are all above 26. So that guy is insane. But yeah, uh, let's just go over the burst and what it looks like. Uh, typically, um, say you're just bursting someone and you have like a rogue doing the CC for you. What it would look like is you're going to just go ahead and pop veins early. Because uh, this is going to give you a 30 second window to do a lot of damage. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and just hit the dummy real quick. So we're toggled for PvP. And we're going to start with a frost bomb into flurry and then just ray of frost. So that is the most damage you can do in a burst window. And then you're going to just go ahead and use your Ice Lance procs. And then you're going to Glacial Strike and shatter it. So that's typically like if all the stars align and you can get all your damage off and someone is literally handing them on a silver platter for you, you know, that's, that's what it should look like. Um, but we're going to go over just like your damage in general because a lot of the stuff you're going to have people CCing you, kicking you, you know, fearing you, mind controlling you, just spamming CC on you. And a lot of times they're going to try and cancel your Ray of Frost. So we're going to just go through kind of how each damaging skill works so that you guys can like understand how the damage is working and like know what you're trying to preemptively set up to get the most damage out. Yo! Bro with the five gifted. Thank you so much. So much love for the good vid already. Yo, thank you, man. Okay. Um, so breakdown. Um, basically with mage, how it works is you want to be ice lancing uh, as much as you can. Unless you're playing the uh, Frostbolt build. I don't play it. You're going to basically, if you want to play the Frostbolt build, you're basically daring your icy veins window. You're going to be taking Frozen Touch and Deep Shatter. Um, basically, you'll just be trying to shatter your Frost Bolts in your uh, Icy Veins window. I just typically don't do that because I enjoy casting Glacial. I get a lot of value out of it. I enjoy it. It's worked for me. Depends on what your goals are. Uh, I know Raikou is like the best mage in the world right now. And he actually plays that build but I just like using Glacial and it's a part of our two set. You shouldn't be running this gear, actually. I'm only running this gear because I'm trying out Arcane, but for the sake of the video, uh, we're gonna go back to just the damage. Um, so, Ray of Frost. This is your hardest hitting ability. The way this works is you channel an icy beam at an enemy for 3.5 seconds, dealing five, uh, 55,000 frost damage over 0.7, 0.7 seconds. So basically it will tick and it hits the very hardest at the very last tick at the end. So if you can get a 3.5 second, so if you're like mapping that out, like you can't really dragon's breath like to cover yourself. Like you need a lot of times you're going to be like trying to get creative with like how you're getting your ray of frost off. Like typically I'll ray of frost and then uh, shimmer behind a pillar. Um, and if not, if you're running, um, Icy flows, I'll like cast it and then run line of sight. Similar to like when you're playing arcane and just using your missiles. So the way this works though, is the way you get the most value out of this is you get these stacks, okay? When you cast Ice Lance and it's on a frozen target. So here, let's just do this. Okay, boom. So you see this buff right here? This is called Cryopathy. I don't think I'm saying that right, but oh well. Okay, sorry. So. Here, give me a second. Okay, we just got a proc, that's huge. But, so this buff right here, and I'm running Agus's weak aura package. Uh, if you take a look at your talent tree, it's right here at the bottom right, on the bottom. Each time you consume a finger of frost, the damage your next ray of frost is increased by 5%. This stacks up to 10 times, okay? 
So basically, every time you're getting like those icy ice lance procs, every time you ice lance, this number will go all the way up to 10. And when it's at 10, it's like, okay, now your ray of frost is gonna hit like a bus, okay? We're actually gonna dodge the solo shuffle cue just for you guys to make sure you guys know how to burst. We're gonna let that play out. But basically it stacks up to 10 times and when it's at 10 and you have this buff, cool. You're ready to ray a frost and try and set yourself up. And then the second condition you're gonna need to get the most value out of it is you wanna flurry your target because flurry is gonna make your you just crit more in this window of your ray of frost. So if you have your flurry on your target and then you have 10 stacks of cryopathy, you're ready to one tap somebody. It doesn't hit as hard, they nerfed it a little bit, but it's gonna just give you the most value when you're using that. So that's how you kind of play around Ray of Frost. Uh, when you're getting trained, the way you do damage is a little bit different. Um, basically, what you'll be doing is you'll be frozen orbing and blizzarding a lot. And you wanna just be really careful of like you're not breaking CC and stuff if your teammates are trying to set you up. But you'll basically just be trying to shatter your ice lances. So basically, it, you can see at the very bottom right of my screen, it says Ice Lance damage is tripled against frozen targets. So when you get this buff, I believe it's called, yeah, Fingers of Frost, it does damage as if your target was frozen. So that's gonna give you three times the amount of damage, right? So basically you can use Flurry, right? This will act as if the target is frozen. So you can Ice Lance into that. You can Frozen Orb, here we go. Frozen orb, when it's hitting, it uh, launches an orb at them. Uh, when it's active, you get those finger of frost every five seconds. So you're basically just becoming a human turret and shooting ice lances out. That's gonna be your hardest hitting spell overall outside of your ray of frost. So when you're just trying to do constant damage or you don't have a ton of damage, it's gonna be coming Dude, from your man. ice lance. Oh my God. Yo, Daniel, it's smoke. Thank you so much for the prime. Um, your damage is gonna mainly come from your Ray of Frost and then your Frost Bomb. Frost Bomb is huge. Uh, the way you're gonna be playing around your Frost Bomb is like this. Uh, I'm in PvP. When I put Frost Bomb on a target, in five second window, after five seconds, ready, it's gonna blow up. Boom, there you go, 262,000 damage. So it's gonna chunk someone for like a fifth of their health, right? I just found this channel and I much appreciate you. Yo, thank you, Daniel. Thank you for the prime and I'm glad you like it, man. Um, that's how Frost Bomb works. Five second window, you put it on them, it's gonna explode afterwards, okay? Uh, that, this is dispellable, okay? So the way you're gonna get the most value out of your Frost Bomb is you wanna cross CC. So I'll typically set myself up in Solo Shuffle where I'm gonna polymorph the off target and I'm gonna Frost Bomb the kill target. So the healer has to pick hey, I want my DPS to come and do damage, or hey, I don't want my teammate to take a lot of damage. And that kind of sets you up where it's like the healer will typically have to dispel one or the other unless they're playing like a thing where they can spam it. He is a go already and I have 10 minutes here. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you guys like this. this I, I, love, I love Mage, it's, it's, it's a really, really fun class. Um, that's generally it. Um, so it's like, just to really recap, th this is gonna be like your one-shot combo. So if you're dueling and you wanna get a lot of value, uh, every time you pop Icy Veins, you're gonna get 10 stacks of Cryopathy, okay? So that gives you that Ray of Frost damage is gonna be maxed out when you, you pop Icy Veins. You're gonna see it on my screen. It's gonna just be maxed out. So, and for you visual learners, I'm gonna just go ahead and burst and show you guys like a basically an example of me just trying to do the most optimal damage that I can. And um, the, oh, the last spell I really wanna go over is Glacial. Glacial is a huge spike of ice. It is a giant spell. Basically how this works is while you're ice lancing or just um, flurrying, here, I'm gonna build it. You get these icicles, okay? And then when you get enough of them, right, you can Glacial, okay? So when you have Glacial, it looks like this. I'm sure you guys have pressed this before, boom. But you can actually shatter this, okay? So you can Ice Lance into it, but you can actually shatter your Glacial uh, glacial as well. So I'll typically go like this. 
and like say I'm like bursting this guy and then like I have my glacial, I'll glacial and then I'll ice nova him immediately and it, it shatters it. So it does a lot more damage while it's hitting and then I'll ice lance into that and it'll crit as well. So it's like boom, boom, you know what I mean? So it's like when you're setting yourself up in like a glacial window, you'll put like a frost bomb on them, okay? So he has a frost bomb on him, okay? I'm gonna build my icicles really quick. And then it's like, boom, I have a glacial. I'm gonna shatter this. So I can shatter it with flurry. I can cast glacial into flurry. I didn't do it fast enough there. Uh, it's usually better to do that from like, it's like a certain distance. But the safest bet you have is to just glacial right into ice nova. Does flurry or ice nova work better for shattering? Uh, I believe that ice nova is the best. It's the most consistent. Cause glacial, like if you flurry uh, a glacial, right? Look, if I'm standing back here, right? Say I glacial and then I flurry right after. See right there, it's shattered, okay? But if I'm standing like right next to the target, let's see. Okay, we're just keep doing damage. Okay, now I, I, I need a flurry. So I'm just keep casting Frostbolt. I, so basically if you need flurries and you don't have anything to freeze, oh shit, sorry, I forgot fingered that. Uh, you can cast Frostbolt, I have a talent that it basically will give you a flurry. It has a 50% chance to give you a flurry stack. But look, if I glacial him and I'm right next to him and I try and do it right after, it, it doesn't, it's inconsistent. And people can fact check me on this. I, that's how I was taught. That's what I was told. I believe that's how it works. I, I've, I've had success just using Nova. It's more consistent in my opinion. But you also want to use your Nova uh, if you're ever running Comet Storm. I really only run Comet Storm if I have someone who's like going to be shutting down, like if I'm playing with like a rogue or someone who's going to be consistently slowing the target and stunning them. Okay, cool. And then, um, yo, thank you guys so much for the fucking hype train. That's actually so hype. You guys are awesome. Um, yeah, because of the flurry tribal time, exactly. What could be like the best defensive strats for a rogue hunting you or DH? Okay. Um, should we add this to the video or should we make a separate video on just how to kite? Okay, we're gonna just make this a whole collective guide. Okay, let's talk defensives. Um, how I use my defensives typically, uh, so say I'm killing this target, right? And say this is, uh, let's go ahead and mark this guy. Say this is a demon hunter and this is like a warlock, okay? Odds are, if you have a melee with you, they're gonna be training you. The way I play my defensives is the perfect scenario, right? is I'm going to know he's gonna to connect to me and stun me, and I'm going to alter and then blink away where I'm far from this warlock, right? And I have my altar rolling, so now this DK has to come all the way to here, and then I alter back, right? And but, but right before I alter back, I want to actually Nova him over here, so then I get, I'm get i like getting ahead in the movement game, if that makes sense. So basically, like what I wanna be doing is, it's dependent on two things. So Mage has two play styles and the way that it dictates it is if you have, if you're playing with an assassination rogue or a warrior or an affliction warlock or a shadow priest, if you're polymorphing the off DPS a lot, it's gonna take their dots off them, right? Which means they're getting less pressure out. So. I will typically be playing the movement game and like slowing them, you know, rooting them, blinking away, altering back, knocking them, blinking again, they get to me, I know with them. I'll be playing the movement game if I know my, like say the shadow priest was dotting this guy and dotting him and dotting the healer. I will be just trying to kite more and making sure I'm staying in like my healer's line, right? But if it's something where I'm playing with like a rogue or a Destro Lock, or a Devastation Evoker. I will usually uh, polymorph this guy to peel myself. So I'll, if it's like a Feral Druid, and for some reason we're not killing him, I'll just try and breath him and put him in a ring, you know? But I'm gonna be trying to do that when I have the Feral Druid where I'm not gonna get kicked by this lock. 
So I'll do um, a separate segment on just positioning in and in and of itself. But I hope that kind of gives you like the start of like kind of the play style with Frost is you're either going to be enabling like just positioning well and kiting well, right? Versus if you have a dot class with you, but you're going to be able to actually set yourself up and peel him yourself if you have, um, uh, if you're playing like a setup class. I hope that makes sense. Uh, mind explaining your thoughts on which PvP talents and why? Yeah, of course. Um, so I will play Snowdrift if I am playing with someone who doesn't have a lot of setup. Uh, I use this in 2v2 a lot uh, if I'm doing like 1v2s. Uh, I can actually show you guys a combo really quick with it. Um, typically what I will do is I will set myself up. Say like they're like coming on to, like to burst me. Like what I'll do is I will like set myself up where I'll go like a breath into a ring, okay? And then I can like burst and then I frost bomb him. He would still be in a polymorph and then I have five seconds and then I can snow drift, wait for it to stun. And then I put my flurry and then I can ray of frost him or I can glacial or you can Comet Storm. It just kind of depends what you have available, but it's really important that you breath him into either a sheep or a ring so that he CC'd and now you can dot him, right? With the Frost Bomb, because it's not going to break the poly. And then you start the Snow Drift and you don't do damage until he is actually stunned by the Snow Drift. But a lot of times they're just going to trinket it and then you just kind of will like root him, blink away. You know, you can use your altar here and then you're going to reset your cooldowns, right? Alter back in. Okay, he's off the yard. Boom, stun him into breath, into ring. And then you try and do it again. Snow drift, flurry. You can glacial, you can comet storm. Whatever damage you have available at that time, uh, you kind of, you know, like you play frost very setup based. So that's like typically how you're going to duel um, or if you're playing snow drift. Uh, another good talent that I like to play, I actually started playing because of watching a lot of Raikou, is Concentrated Coolness. Uh, basically how this works is um, Frozen Orb's damage is increased by 10% and is now castable at a location within 40 yard, uh, 40 yard range but no longer moves. So basically when you're running this talent, um, I have to wait until Snow drifts off cooldown. Sorry, so many questions. What do you think about keybinds? Like, how are yours? I got you. Here, let me show you really quick. Um, concentrated coolness. I take this whenever I'm playing like a setup comp or like I want to make sure my orb's not breaking a lot of CC. You can basically, oh, okay, I wasn't in PVP mode. But when you're in PVP mode, this is a PVP dummy when you hit it, you go in PVP mode. Uh, it basically acts almost like ring and you can place your orb. So like if the healer say was like right here, I could put the orb over here and it wouldn't actually break my poly or like a CC. So this is really good for that. It's just a really useful talent. Uh, if I'm playing a dot comp, I'm typically playing ring of fire and uh, you don't really need to run master shepherd. But yeah, I always run frost bomb. You never not run frost bomb. You sometimes, and you don't really play Master Shepherd if you don't want to remove people's dots, essentially. So if you just need more damage, uh, you can play Ring of Fire here. Ice Wall is very good, but it's rare. So it's like, it was really good for me from like 2K MMR to like 2200. I would Ice Wall healers off if I didn't have any more CC. You can, you can catch a lot of people off guard in Solo Shuffle. Uh, 3v3, it's kind of hard, but this is a really fun talent to experiment with. You can get a lot of value, but it's it's very, very situational. Very, It's really good in Rogue Mage 2s. Really good in Rogue Mage 2s. But yeah, that's typically for talents what I do. Um, sorry to have so many questions. What do you think about keybinds? Um, so I actually use this spreadsheet. I'll go ahead and post it for you guys. So you can make a copy of it. Um, I've changed my keybinds a lot. Um, here, let me show you guys real quick. So I use this dock um, and I kind of map it out in my brain. So I kind of will like think in my head, like what am I going to be pressing a lot, right? So you're going to be flurrying a ton on mage and you're going to be ice lancing a ton on mage. So I play WASD. Um, 
I like having my spammables uh, where I like they're just close and easy to hit for me. Is it going to be how to play WoW? <laughs> But I typically will play things like Frost, uh, Frostbolt. I spam kind of a lot. So I like want it on my two because I can hit it while I'm strafing right and left, right? And then I can also hit it on the left side of the pillar too. Versus like if I was hitting like three, it's like hard. There's like a little bit of a delay when you go like certain sides, you know, versus like two, you can hit with your middle finger on either side. Uh, other than that, the only rule of thumb I would make uh, is what's really common is if you're going to hit abilities that are off of a global cooldown, so for instance, blink, alter time, I would make sure that you keep them on the same modifier. So like my methodology, right, is I put my trinket on shift and S. So all of my defensives or options that I would follow that up with are on a shift modifier as well. So if I have to trinket and alter, I can hit SF and there's literally no delay. You know what I mean? Versus if I had to hit shift S and then let go and then hit F, it's just gonna create like a couple milliseconds delay. Um, so that's like a really good rule of thumb is you wanna make sure things that you hit in succession of each other are on the same modifier. And also, and this one's personal to me, is I typically keep cooldowns on a shift modifier so I don't fat finger them, right? So it's like for me, one of my keybinds that I actually, I wish I had a different one for is cold snap. If I'm getting like trained really hard or I like fat, I sometimes will fat finger my cold snap. So it'd be like a lot better if it was on like a shift modifier cause it's like a three minute or five minute cooldown, right? So it's like, it's just like important that you don't hit like, if you're like kiting, you know, and you're like breathing and there's a demon hunter on you, you know, and you actually hit Z, you're down an ice block. That's that's really bad. So, um, yeah, that's typically how I do my keybinds. Um, and I'll go ahead and share this with you guys. You can just go ahead. The way you use it is you just go to file and then just make a copy. And you can kind of start mapping out your skills in your head of like how you want to do it, if that makes sense. But yeah, that's typically how I do my keybinds. Any other questions on Mage? Thank you so much. Now I have to annihilate. Hell yeah. Thank you. No, of course. Yeah, I'm glad you guys enjoy. That's sick. Yeah, but that's that's pretty much everything Frost. I don't think I'm leaving anything out. Um, all right, we'll put a range here eventually. Okay, melee, melee, healer. And you, let's have our Mage. And then we'll have our healer. Okay, so positioning on mage. If you are the kill target, you should not be standing on their healer. It's rule number one. There is no reason, unless you have like the most perfect, like everyone's using DRs perfectly, there's no reason for you to be playing up here. You wanna play back and you want the DPS to chase you away from their healer so that the healer has to come in line where your healer, right? Your healer should be like here for this. Um, so that your healer, right, is out of line of sight and can just hide, like hump this pillar, right? And if he wants to, he has like a safe route to like go for CC, right? But you wanna set up, you're, you wanna be playing max distance from your healer, right? But not like, you kind of want their healer, like, so say they're just playing stacked like this and you're taking a lot of damage and then this guy jumps over here and your healer gets CC'd, you would just kite to this way and make them come with you, right? If they're running at you like this, it is your other DPS's job to peel you. So if you have a rogue and they're like this, they're, he's gonna be able to set up on all these guys for you. That's pretty much like it for positioning. Uh, I guess if you're playing uh, double caster, you kind of want to make a triangle formation. And like how you want to set that up is say you're playing with like a warlock. Um, if you're the kill target, right? You want to be positioned here. And then your warlock will be like playing on top of their healer, just CCing them all game, right? And then your healer can just be either like playing here 
Or like here, but you'd, but you'd probably want to be like this. But basically, it's like you want to make a triangle, right? Where you two are playing max range, and you guys are both max range from your healer. But basically, whoever the kill target is, you want to like kite and bring them away from their healer so that the healer has to stay out in the open and they're just getting CC'd by you. And typically this guy will fear it. He'll go over here, he'll be feared, right? And then when he's on fear DR, you'll be able to just poly him, but you also can kite and bring them line of sight. That's kind of it for uh, positioning. A lot of it's situational. Um, like in his example, I'm too focused to kill one and sometimes I should just relax, you know what I mean? Or I'm having too many add-ons. Yeah, like I think with mage, um, you get comfortable knowing like, hey, I have every CC getting on me. So say this, say you're here, right? He kicks you, he uses CC on you and he kicks you. Your focus right now is your defensives and your positioning, right? Which right here would be like good. So you're, you're bringing them here and the healer's just stacking. If you need to, like if your healer is able to play right here, he's able to just PVE heal you and you guys are going to be getting set up on this guy, right? But if he's like stacking on your healer, or the positioning starting to get a little weird. Um, you could alter time, blink away. They both go there, right? You alter back. Then their healer has to like kind of come out and heal them. You know what I mean? And the lock could get like a fear and then that guy starts running off there. Um, but it's like, if you're being, if you're the kill target damage, you want to try and do like, so like you'll be sitting there basically just trying to get off what damage that you can, but your priority is living and making sure like you're kiting well, right? Where it's like, you're kiting around your healer or you're kiting in a way that like, you're bringing their healer out into the open. You know what I mean? Or you could play like here, and they come here, and they get CC'd. You know what I mean? Ideally, you shouldn't want to play on this side. There's more space over here, so you'd want to play like here. This is like ideal. And just, just as only in double caster, this is like perfect positioning. And like his lock gate would be like here or something. Yeah, I get it, man. Thank you so much. Hell yeah. But yeah, that's like positioning in a nutshell. Uh, you just like want to bring their healer in a bad so spot so you can land CC on them. And other than that, it's like you're trying to get the most value you can out of your altered times, your Frost Nova, uh, making sure you're bearing, bear, barriering, is that a word? You want to use that smart, like you don't want to overlap. Like if I alter time, right? I don't need a barrier. Like I'm gonna go back to my health up. You know what I mean? So I can save that altar back. Now I've negated that damage with the altar and then use the barrier. So like just little like niche things like that. If your teammates getting killed and your healers in CC, give them a mass barrier, you know? Then they're gonna have 260,000s negated off them, right? And if they're a dot class, they get uptime, right? You don't wanna be peeling if they're a dot class. You're gonna be hurting their damage. You only want to be peeling if they don't have any defensives to trade. If that makes sense. Like you want to be just doing damage and that's going to make you win the trade. So it's like it's a battle of cooldowns and getting the most value out of it you can. But typically like your rotation will look like alter, you know, alter time, blink away. They come over here, root them, alter back. I have two fucking blinks, you know. Uh, I only play blink stun in the sub rogue and sometimes outlaw. I think that shimmer just allows you to be a lot more aggressive uh, and get cast off. You typically will use shimmer like when you're trying to cast something of high value. So if I'm glacialing, I'd like blink away to make sure I get it, you know, but if they have a range kicked, you know, you just kind of want to juke it, get precog. But yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. That's our mage guide. Sweet, cool.